Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good, morning. good evening, yeah. and good night. From everyone who's joined us from all around the globe. Um, hopefully the stream is looking good and is sounding good. Last week we had a number of technical difficulties, so... We did, we did. Let's the, hope that's not the case this week. The popcorn must be taken longer than expected. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly. Also, the, Early famous, morning. the famous Highway 401 was yeah. more of a disaster than usual. Yep. Um, so big morning. Um, big morning. So we're into fall launch season. Um, so Titleist obviously have product to release this fall. We know <coughs> what that is. TaylorMade have kept this really close to their chest. Um, you know, I saw some, you know, when we teased this out last night, a lot of comments about what it was that was coming out and a lot of people were right and there was a lot of people who were kind of not sure what it was. I almost texted you, like, why do so many people know exactly what's coming out? Because mm, yeah. we weren't even allowed to say a word about it. I, I, you know, I think there might be a little bit of, uh, at times, you know, leakage, a little mm. bit of guerrilla marketing with these things. Um, so they want a little bit of buzz, but I'm not, not sure. I mean, they, they, they will always it. say no, but right. you know, at the end of the day, the longer you have to market something, the more people can be ready to purchase it once it releases. That's true. So um, I think you know, leaking it is not the, always the worst thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, not interesting stuff. So I think the product of the year last year for TaylorMade was P790 original, uh, the the original iron. So I I'm think gonna get that out. For yep, more. it was uh, it was <coughs> certainly our best selling iron here at TXG. I think. The blend of a, a player's look with uh, with the with the game improvement performance, um, you know, kind of it suited so many people. And you know, we had a lot of kind of higher handicappers go into and, and at first go, oh, geez, that's that's you know, that's small, that's that's a low offset, that's a lot of these things. Then they would hit it, yeah, and they would they would strike it better and longer and more consistent. It would manage their misses better. So um, it was good for that player. But the player who maybe you know didn't do so well with it, and it's well documented, the player who's susceptible to low spinners, yes. susceptible to you know the the hot kind of flyer off the face, all that sort of stuff. That was the player who uh, struggled a little bit with P790. Gotcha. Um, can we give people a little? We can go right into all that now. Yes. Yeah, okay. So I think all the. So what we've got set up, and hopefully this works the whole time. A little close-up station. So we've got. What is this? New P790, that's yeah. a pitching wedge. The new 790. So, I mean, if we kind of like, I'm gonna spin go this ahead. round yeah, a little bit. Ahead. So as I spin that round, so that profile right there gives you a look at the toe section. So if you look above the, above the CG, the golf club, and the top part, you can see how much it's been thinned out. Right? I know this is a six iron that we're comparing it to, but you can see the screw plate placement is different now. A little bit different, and, and it's, it's more so much the, the, the sort of, how much the, the sort of back end has been, let me just kind of point yeah, to yeah. a little bit here, but this, uh, if I can, this sort of back section, mm. how much thinner that is than before. So yes. it has a little bit more of a compact look to it. Okay. Um, and I was saying to you, and I actually said this to, to Graham uh, from TaylorMade, that when I saw the, um, the heads, I was surprised that they had went fractionally smaller. Yeah. But there's a reason they went fractionally smaller because they came out with a, a super game improvement version, version of the P790, which is right here. Let everyone get a look at that. So let's see if we can get that right. one. Yeah, perfect. There it is. So this is the this is the monster. This is the beast. That's a seven iron. Yep. So this is going into the sort of. Uh, sort of, you know, really, uh, you know, high-end market of PXG, um, you know, Epic Forge mm. that we were testing a couple of weeks ago, so. The premium stuff. The real premium stuff. Um, some real kind of exotic mix of, of materials, you know, it's, it's unusual to make a titanium head these days. Especially uh, in an iron, in I mean, I don't iron. even know if I've personally ever even heard of that. Yeah, so I mean, obviously trying to, the, well, the whole idea being the weight savings, which allows them to put this, you know, tungsten bar across the back, Matty. I mean, that, that bar That's across the here. back, yeah. So that, that basically weighs 40% of the overall weight of the head. Really? Wow. So the, the idea of, of being able to sort of, uh, you know, make the club sort of more forgiving, make it more consistent, um, was, was kind of what they were going for there, but at, at extreme speed. So wow. basically what, on testing, what Taylor made a fire, and, and you know, I'm sure by this point there's been enough other videos who, who have mentioned something similar, but um, piece, the new P790 has been uh, reported to be on average 
two to three miles an hour faster than last year. Really? Yep, so a little bit thinner face, a little bit quicker tech, but more consistent. Um, and then P790 tie is coming in about six miles an hour faster than, than last year's. That's insane. Um, so that's six a, miles on, on already pretty much the, uh, the, the, the kind of fastest head out there, which it yeah. was. Yep. Um, and I think that was the fastest head of last year. Um, Crazy. Yeah, so it's interesting. Getting, so, some, getting some initial reactions. Yeah, I mean, that, let's pull that one up. That's an interesting one. So a smaller P790, isn't that basically a P760? No, hmm. right? Because the reason for that is though, is, is the progression that a P760 undertakes with, uh, with the kind of reduction of the speed foam uh, as it progresses. So no, it's, it's definitely not. If you look at the, the sole design of it, uh, as well, the, the sort of pre-worn leading edge on, on the, the 760. The 760 is an iron that's designed for uh, basically a, a, a low handicap or a tour player to use. P790 is not designed for that player. So I think that's an important one to note. It is not, it is not going to encroach on what P760 yeah. is. So one of the first things I wanted to do with P790, the new one, was try and bend it. Right. Yeah, you were over there. I was over there kind of messing about with it, just seeing kind of how bendable it is. It's still a, a sort of a, a firmer head than, than what P760 is. You remember that very first time we tested P760, how soft, you know, you, you could have said it felt. And, Extremely. Um, you know, a lot of our clients that, that kind of we fit into that head um, sort of, you know, obviously say uh, how soft that feels. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's keep taking the curtain back on these uh, new things, UDI. Mm -hmm. So that's the new UDI model yep. there. Yeah, so a tough, one to, a tough one to keep sort of under wraps that one because obviously the, the Open Championship in that's Ireland, right. yeah. it was, you know, there was a lot of guys wanted to play, um, wanted to play the new that's iron. Cool. And there's, there's some interesting stories of some non-contracted tailor-made players who, uh, oh, who yeah. sort of got into that one fairly recently. So um, Very cool. I think of all the, the long irons, um, again, it, it kind of follows the family sort of tradition of being extremely fast, forgiven, but it looks great. It does look yeah. really, really good. There, there are some other heads uh, out in the marketplace, but you know, there, none of them look quite as good as that I one. I think that's got to be one of the smaller driving irons. It definitely is. I mean, if you look at Titleist and, and you obviously the, the U500, the 510, you look at Srixen with the U85, mm -hmm. the only one to me that's comparable is X, uh, X4 by Callaway. Correct. Um, and so I would say this has less offset than, um, than X Forged. Yep, agreed. Agreed. So uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit smaller profile on that. Is this going to come? Um, they've put a hazardous smoke in yeah, there. Our yeah. sample is that what? Uh, That's what sort the standard of standard traffic. Yeah, yeah. I think cool. as a, as a general part, um, that one will be the standard. It seems to be the standard in, in kind of most OEMs right now, doesn't it? You were saying, yeah, it's, well, I think that's why we want to do some testing with it because it's going to be seen by so many people mm -hmm. on the shelf and maybe even as like their first um, experience with it at a demo day and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, for um, sure. So it'll be cool to see what that whole thing is about. Absolutely. Um, Ian is going to be the one hitting these. Yeah. yeah. A few people have said that. Yeah, no lefty. No lefties uh, yet. No lefty heads are on their way and uh, we were really trying, Graham was trying hard to get the, the lefties in, but... You know, the samples, we got them sort of as they were made available so that we could do this on launch day. Which we're, we're very appreciative very thankful. of. So. so whatever we do today, there's, there's more <laughs> extensive testing yeah. to come, guys. And uh, we need our Iron Baron here to be, uh, to be hitting them so that That's we right. can do comparable sort of um, testing. But it'll give us an idea. Uh, left the UDI, no. Oh, really? No. Okay. They won't make it at all? They won't make it. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, I was. Uh, Taylor Made's. I have to say, Taylor Made's pretty good about most of their stuff being um, mm -hmm. left-handed. Titleist is by far the best, but like yeah. Taylor Made, for the most part, you can get you can get mostly what you need as a lefty. Interesting one by Dean there. Are these irons different by category than G410s? I would say so. Yeah, I think that's a really good question, uh, Dean. I think that's. Um, it's a G410. I, you know, I think if you look at those those two heads and. And the kind of design properties of those. There's it there. You know, even just the sole, the offset. Um, lots of offset. On lots and lots, yeah. Versus, do I have the, I think I've got the. What do you got there? the 7RP790 there. So if you kind of compare the, the two, I mean, the sole difference, the, the offset difference, very, very different, obviously, uh, club to club. Are you thinking G410 is more just pure forgiveness then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep, a little bit more. Uh, oh, a little bit the, more. This is the seven iron. Yeah, that's nice. the seven iron. Of this it looks good. Yeah, it does. It looks great. I think. Uh, that's nice. I Pitching think you know. Seven. I, I always liked the original one, but I think this one looks looks better. I think you know from a, a you know from a player's perspective, the visual of it is is slightly better. Yeah, I mean cosmetically, I'm gonna. This is almost getting confusing now. Cosmetically, this uh, the one just above or sorry, right at center of screen is last year's, so they don't look hugely different at the back. Bash, no, but the profile of it and the thinness of uh, I guess the back of the face is, is quite a bit different. So I'm just going to pull up the specs here, just so uh, a lot of people are asking there, Matty, on the specs of them. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, a lot of people are saying, uh, "Is the seven iron 28 degrees?" <laughs> it is not 28 degrees. No, doesn't probably doesn't need to be. So the seven iron is 30.5. Okay, so the six iron's 26 and a half, the seven iron's 30 and a half, eight iron 35, nine at 40, and wedge at 45. So, so they're the, strong, but not insane. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you get to the five, uh, so the pitching wedge, 45 degrees is, is standard, you know, yeah. by today's standards, 46, 45, like that's what it is. They just go in five degree increments rather than four degree increments. Ah, that's okay. the sort of biggest difference. So, you know, when they design these heads, guys, they, they design that with progression in mind and speed off the face in mind. So. You know, they, they don't just say that, okay, we're, we're gonna make, we're gonna make the, the irons five degrees apart, therefore, you know, you're gonna hit them further apart. The faces are, are progressively a little bit quicker, so right. they still give you the proper gapping. Gotcha. Okay. Just sure Why don't we dive right. into the, uh, the, the, the wedges, wedges here, yeah. because that's one I was really, uh, let's grab the new one. Wait, if, have I got it? Have you got You've it? got a, a new head over there, yeah. Or, or do I have one of each? No. I think, uh, let me grab the, the new one with the wrapper oh, on it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> with me, I had one of the nicest grips I've felt in a long time. Lampkin Crossline Genesis um, with a little bit of cord through it. That for me, well, that might be for as, your, your as, soon as, I, uh, as soon as I felt that thing, I thought that's tacky, but has a little bit of cord through it. Really nice. Maybe it reminded me a bit of like an old uh, Golf Pride V55. I remember, remember those. That? I love those. Loved. Should everyone never, loved those. Why did they stop making those? I've never met somebody who didn't love those. <laughs> so true. So true. So. Um, All right. Unbox. Unbox. So the, the sort of idea here is we have a, a sort of plated head with a raw face. Okay. So the idea is when you take the, the sort of sticker off the face, Matty, mm. We're exposing a, a basically a raw, high friction head. So that's going to oxidize eventually and, and become rusty. Right, so let's, uh, we, we've been very, very lucky to be given a, a sort of before and after here. Absolutely, so, so if we, let's drop in the yeah, well, before. So there is what it looks like when you take the, the label off, yep. and then there is what it looks like after it's been exposed for so quite some time. So I believe that's six months of, uh, effectively six effectively months six of months. rust, what they sort of wow. would estimate. Yeah, you can see it's, it's so, quite, uh, now this has obviously been done very evenly and sort yep. of um, for demo purposes. Obviously someone would have a bit of a wear spot from, from hitting some shots, but so what is the, is it just as simple as that? The rust factor makes it have more of a, a rough surface and it grabs the ball a little bit Higher better. rate of friction. That's all it is. Yeah, right? higher rate of friction. So, huh. um, you know, that was going back to when, you know, Cleveland used to make the, the RTG uh, wedges, the, the raw tour grind, um, you know, rusty wedges and, and so the, the rust particles given us additional, uh, uh, additional sort of grip and friction. Right. So. Back of the wedge looks very, very good. And everything else about it is obviously not rusted. Yeah. Like it looks quite good. So your wedge won't look sort of beat up, but the face is the part that you get, I guess, the benefit from. Interesting, uh, interesting sort of initially seeing the comments. I'm just watching, uh, you know, some of the different reactions to that. So some people saying raw face with plated head looks awful. Why not make it all raw? Oh. I completely disagree. Yeah, I was gonna say I prefer. I like, I, I like this. I rendition. love the yeah. clean sort of uh, the clean look of it. I love the identification of the score lines through the the raw area. Just mm -hmm. I mean, you know, each to their own. I think for sure know, yeah. for for you guys, you know, definitely, you know, interesting. But um, it's uh, I think it will it will divide the crowd. I saw sure. Tiger's. Uh, so Tiger has the fifty six degree in play already. His head is is all raw. Oh, so they made him an all-raw one? They made him an all-raw one. So. But he's always, like, his Nike wedges used to be kind of rusty, were. didn't they? They were, yeah. absolutely, they were. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. So, um, no, they, they look good. I mean, you know, for those of, 
So those of you who can remember back probably sort of 20 years or so in terms of tailor-made wedges, when I first saw this, tailor-made made a, a wedge matty that uh, had a similar idea, had actually had a, a film over the face, but it was, a, it was like a copper face that had like a, like a, it was like a sandblasted copper face. Oh, really? Problem was being sandblasted, it didn't last. Right, right, so right. like you would play with the wedge for three or four days and it would spin like you wouldn't believe. And then it was just gone. And basically. it was gone. And huh. it was basically like, it actually went, because it's copper, it went very smooth. And you know, if anything, it, it went to the opposite way. So, you know, you, you were getting, sort of, it seemed like less friction. Yeah, yeah. Or it'd effectively be, less friction. It'd be friction. like VJ switching your wedges out every day. Exactly. So, um, so this is interesting. I've went, you know, back to that. And, and <clears> technology <throat> goes in circles. That's what I love about this stuff. I like I looked at that and went, I've seen that before. Well, it's like, it's like fashion to some degree, yeah, right? People absolutely. say that about clothes and stuff. Yep. It kind of follows a little bit of a cycle. But they have found a better way to do it, which I take my hat off to them yeah. because they obviously the, the oxidize, you know, the, the sort of ru the rusting, um, you know, the fact that the way the face oxidizes will, will re-oxidize and it will obviously sort of become, it will continue to be rusty for as long as you have it, if not gain, gain more. Yeah, it'll continue to gain it even more. Yeah, yeah. my question to TaylorMade actually was, uh, when I saw it was, you know, at, at what point can you regulate the, the value of the rust and the value of the friction. Is there any um, USJ mm -hmm. rules in place? Yeah, oh, there yeah. Are? You, ah. you, you, there's only so sort of so rough the face can be before yeah. you sort of have a, somewhat of a, I guess, an unfair advantage. So, huh. um, wow. you know, that's why when it comes to milling on the face, when it comes to, you know, face friction, um, sandblast and this and that, you know, there's there are regulations for that. So. Um, uh, you know, I wonder, I wonder, I guess, I mean, they, they're, they're going to have given spent that the thought, a yeah. lot of money, but I would be curious about that. Absolutely. Uh, what's that other new high toe wedge you've got there? Let's the, yeah, the, the big foot. The big foot. Let's take a look at that bad The boy. big foot. Now, if if the new mill grind two wedges divided the crowd, I'm, I'm fearing for the, the big foot. <laughs> yeah, that's what this thing is. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, um, the high toe profile, um, it's very, very similar, you know, in, in aesthetic, but with a much, much wider sole. Is it ever? Yeah. 15 degrees of bounce. Okay. 15? 15. So, you know, unbelievable. Kind of, you know, think of, think of uh, the, it was Callaway or, or sort of, or, do you know what I said? I mean, Hogan uh, originally had the Sure Out. The sure something? Out. Yeah, I've seen those. That's, that's basically what this is. So if people remember, huh. uh, remember that, um, sort of design and, and who that was for. So, I mean, if you look at it from that angle, yeah. where you, exactly you had it, you'd go, it's just another high tail. It looks the same as a high tail. Exactly. Although so, it does sit eight inches off the ground when yeah, <laughs> you yeah. set it down. And, and the idea being that, that you know, the player who sort of digs with it and, uh, and kind of, you know, takes too much turf and, you know, maybe chunks a lot of uh, chip shots, you know, the, the additional bounce, there's actually a little bit of sort of um, anti-dig technology, you know, pre-worn leading edge, you know, right, in, in right. other words. Yeah, you can um, see the, the, the uh, on the back the edge, sole grind yeah, a little bit of trail relief. It's still there, right? It's Definitely. got the same kind of, that's interesting. Yeah, so I mean, the idea of high toe being obviously CG relocation uh, up and out towards the toe. You've got obviously scoring lines out towards the toe where because of the nature of, of wedge shots, we do cut across them a little bit more especially in bunkers, uh, we do tend to hit, you know, more shots out towards the toe and it just guarantees that you still get the same reaction of the golf ball, whether you hit it in the middle of the toe. Yep. So uh, I think this is a, a really good option for, for people out there who maybe struggle a little bit with the, uh, with the more lofted wedges. So now you can use yeah, the wedges that, that everyone else is sort of using <coughs> and get, get the, the, the technology and the utilization of that, but you can also um, get the forgiveness at the same yep. time. No, I think they'll sell quite a few of those. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, what else? Man, there's so much stuff. Putters, you want to show these putters before we uh, start? Yeah, let's do Doing that. Anything else? Let's do that. So I haven't seen, I haven't seen these yet at all. Interesting sort of uh, line. So we have, we have a couple of them here. I'm just going to pull up the rest yeah, of yeah. The, the sort of line up here. So they're both t uh, new TP putters? Yeah. Yep. So adding on, on to the, the CPL, button. yeah. So again, I think there's a lot of conversations uh, going on right now about shaft in, in, uh, in the putter. Uh, and I think there'll be some noise about that, obviously stability and stroke lab and um, you know, you've got KBS have entered, entered the market. 
I think this year at the PGA show there will be a lot of noise uh, from what I'm hearing on putter shafts. More, more putter shafts. Yeah, yeah. We lots. saw a little bit of that I think when we were there, but it. Yeah, I think it was early, early adoption. Yeah, there it is. Um, there. So, so it's called the CT Tour Putter. Yep. Shaft is. So, so difference this putters. year, Matty. So if you look actually at the back of the head, if you can sort of almost show that, so you can see the two little screws. Yeah, let me get a better angle. Okay. So the uh, so the face insert is actually uh, oh, it's tough for that lighting. You kind of see it in the heel side there. Yeah. Um, so the the the, the uh, face plate is actually screwed into the head now. Okay. So, so rather a screw than on either side yeah, of the TP. So before that, it was just an adhesive 3M sort of tape, basically. Was it really? Yeah. Just just kind of pressed in there. This face was taped in. Mm-hmm. So, um, interesting. yeah, very interesting. Um, Tom asking any arm locks? No, no, there are not. So the putters come in uh, you know, either 34, 35 inches as standard, um, you know, sort of multiple different sort of toe hang angles. There's some face balance options, some, uh, you know, sort of mid toe hang options. So we've got sort um, just, of the most traditional yeah. blade here. Is that is that one? Uh, that yeah. So we've here? got the little. Uh, that one's the the Soto. little Soto. Yeah. yeah. So something like that's kind of like that Peretti I use for so something with you know quite a lot of toe hang. It's nice. Uh, quite nice. Uh, Del Monte is a little face balance blade, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people are going to that kind of little mid, almost like kind of mini mallet. It's nice. Of, yeah. Little combo. Well, a even even Roll has that. one just like that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's kind of almost the same. Very popular. So that's that's that's, that's all the lineup. New stuff. Yeah. So wedges. Lots. We've got new P790 irons. Uh, we've got P790 tie. Um, we've got some game improvement stuff. We've got a new UDI. So just kind of filling out the uh, filling out the line a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Giving that a little facelift. How long has it been since the original P790 came out? 2017. Feels like it's been a while. So a couple of years. It's a long time for TaylorMade. Two years. Yeah, I think, and people are people are asking them to do that, and you know, give them their dues. They're, they are listening. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, they've not changed it dramatically, which is interesting. A lot of people go, well, why bother change? You know, I'm quite happy they haven't changed it dramatically because yeah. it, was, it was such a good performer. They've refined it. They've taken the things that were weaknesses and turned them into strengths. Um, you know, the consistency in the face is going to be, um, you know, a big one. And as we go deeper, guys, into obviously testing, we'll go into more of the, the technical elements of, the technology and, and what's actually inside the the head that's that's for another day yeah. where we really dive into that stuff but um we are going to hit some you feeling uh ready to hit a couple shots yeah i can take some yeah. questions how do we do that while you uh warm up hit some pitching wedges and stuff so these have got uh dynamic gold 105 will be the standard kind of offering yep Yep, and then the Among new others, wedges sure. have got the Dynamic Gold S200. Oh, so, okay. So they've got... They, um, they had KBS before, though, no? Or no, that was High Toes had KBS. Yeah, correct. Right. And then the new High Toes still has... It does, okay. Still does have that. All right, guys, bear with us for a second. I'm going uh, to switch the close-up camera over to an Ian camera. As quickly as I can. Probably a lot of questions coming in there, and that as we were chatting about that stuff, Matt, there's probably a lot of stuff for us to. For sure. Yeah, just, I'm gonna just uh, now dive in and let's take a bunch as we hit it. I will go back up. Just see how my. But that's where Ian's gonna be. All right. All right. Um, did you try to bend that UDI or not so much? I have not, no. Somewhat firm, you would expect? Yeah, it was, uh, I was curious as to whether they would go to a kind of softer body. Um, I was able to, so I moved the seven iron slightly. <clears throat> I moved it a degree and a half. Right. Um, so still, still relatively firm to, uh, to the bend. Gotcha. I'm going to start with my... Big foot wedge. <laughs> <laughs> See if I hit this good. 15 and it degrees of bounce. Ends up going in the bag. What do you think about that for full swings? Is that, is that more bounce than, um, than you might want? 
I mean, it really depends, Matty, on, on the amount of delivered loft. So I would say if you're the type of player who is playing shots with a square face, you know, maybe even slightly toed in. I mean, how many golfers, because of their fade, have, have a golf club slightly toed in? It's true. When you slightly toe in uh, the club, it basically makes it play uh, with less bounce. Yep. So, you know, for those types of players who don't get too creative with opening and stuff, I think it's great. I think and, it's no problem. And that's the point of them usually. When you see, I'm not going to name other ones, but there's a lot of kind of, I call them Golf Channel ad wedges that are kind of that shape. What's that? Yeah. And yeah. they always say, like, just, you know, like line it up square and hit a normal shot. And the, well, and the sole just, I guess, is supposed to do it for you. You and I, you and I do a, a fair bit of this. I've just hit a 47-yard kind of pitch shot at 8,000 RPMs of spin. <laughs> That's, a lot. That's high. That's a lot. That's yeah. seriously, seriously high. Yeah, it carried 47 yards, 8,000. I think a lot of people will really like the, the forgiveness and help that this gives you through the strike. I mean, I don't know if you can see where I'm striking those. Let me, let me you see, see that? Oh, I think I should get one of these. Well, look where that is. You should have seen my, my wear pattern from wedges yesterday when I hit a couple balls. It looked like that. I mean, if anyone wonders why there's such a thing as a high toe wedge. That's because where you kind of end up hitting it. It's because we're all crap. <laughs> 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 would, would all that kind of cavity at the back it feels help. great. I'm, I'm it not like it fe feels yeah, solid. Definitely, definitely. Those little pockets allow you to sort of spread the mass and because like a toe, especially a full swing, a toey wedge shot. Yeah, it feels like crap. That's it feels right. Like the whole head it it does, like and then obviously with the amount of mass that's low down there. Yeah. You know, you, the, the whole idea of high toe as well is raising the CG. Mm. So if you're placing a wider sole down there and you don't have the pockets in there you're not able to get the CG where you want it. The CG ends up super, uh, super low. Too low. Yeah, yeah. And then you end up, when you hit it high in the face, it's just dead. Like you mm. get those ball, you know, the ones that sit up around the green and you hit it high in the head and it just goes in, you know, you try to hit it over a bunker or something. Fluff it. Yeah, yeah. Dead, absolutely dead. That's a good point. I'm just gonna put a bit of light on you here, bud. Smart of them to make it look the same at the dress. Looks exactly the same. That. And it really wants to sit square. That should help a bit. 70 yard pitch shot spinning at 10,000 RPMs. <laughs> 10,000. What, sorry, what loft is that? Is that a? This is the 60. Oh, wow. Hmm. Crazy. All right, I'm gonna try to get a couple questions while you're hitting. Uh, That's the first one I've made contact with. <laughs> I'll, I'll let the world know that. <laughs> uh, oh, Rick. Morning, Rick. Mr. Rick Shields. Morning, Rick. I think Rick had some reviews out early this morning. Didn't have a chance to look yet, Rick, as I was driving, but I'm sure you were trying to. See if uh, yeah, Rick can chime in, let us know his. Well, yeah, Rick, if you're, if you're still on, I'm sure you're busy, but if you are still on, let us know what you thought. I'm not sure which ones he hit yet, but he did a video with, um, I think he did a video with the UDI yesterday. Okay. I saw something about that. All right, moving into the mill grind. Um, guys, big toe sort of wedge feels easy to hit. It wants to sit square. Mm. Um, very, very easy to hit an old hack like myself. <laughs> All right, Matty boy. All right, um, a couple, what loft you got there? 56. So general rule of thumb, right, here's a good one. Um, when it comes to wedges, general rule of thumb, I was talking to someone over the weekend, we were discussing this. When it comes to launch angle and wedges, subtract half of the loft okay. minus two. So, that should be your launch angle. Correct. So you would look for 28 on a 60. You're going to... 26 on that? 26 on this guy. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, correct. 26 on are that. Are those kind of like tour average numbers? Those are basically what, the, what, what good players will, will right. sort of look for. Um, Rick says he's still doing some testing. He's got videos coming out next week. Very cool. That's awesome. Well, and that, we're, we're in the same boat we'll be the as same. Rick with that. You know, it's, yeah. 
we're, we're just looking at it today and getting Absolutely. a feel for it and we'll take a deeper dive. Rick, thanks for chiming in, bud. Good to hear from you. Hope all is well and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get over his way at some point, maybe next year. Ask Rick if, if he's a, a Man U fan. It's not sure be. if he's, he's from the Manchester sort of area. I'm not sure if he's a city or if he's a blue right. or a red. Rick, let us know. Yeah, he's either, well, he's going to be a happy boy this weekend either way. They both won. That's right. That is right. So this is the mill grind two. So there's interesting, right? So I've hit that 56 degree, obviously. Hit that 90 yards and it spun significantly less. And that, that big toe really does spin. That, and that's not what I expected. Big foot, not big toe. Big toe. <laughs> the big high toe <laughs> foot. <laughs> A big toe the foot. The big high foot toe. Rick says red. Team red. red. I'm, I'm also a red, Rick. There you go. All right, well, that's good. You'll hit it off just fine. We'll be just fine. I mean, this is just pretty classic. It's, it's exactly pretty what... Traditional wedge, right? Pretty traditional wedge, right? Pretty traditional. A few technical specs on it, Matty. Have a look at that. Have a look how much, how much cover that's grabbing. That's grabbing a significant amount of cover there. Are you hitting Srixons? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, isn't it? That's eating a ball, isn't that it? Is going to, uh, that is going to chew up a golf ball. That's two shots. Interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. So, and you, you, honestly, you can feel it with your finger how rough the surface is. But imagine once that, uh, once that rust kicks in, good luck. So, so um, moving in, seven iron. Uh, yeah, I know Ian's camera angle isn't the best, guys. It's just a webcam. So, this is the good camera. This is the web camera. Eventually, we'll get two good cameras on uh, two angles, but... Guys, honestly, this is as this is <laughs> promise you this is as good as a live stream as you'll ever see. You're not mu you're not missing much. <laughs> you got to get loosened up. Well, your wedges were good. Wedges were fine. How does it feel so far? Or you haven't found different? No, I mean, I haven't. No, I've not. I found I found three inches behind the ball twice. That's okay. Sorry, you have you said you have the seven iron, right? Yeah. Gotcha. So seven iron for me on the golf course, Matty boy, one seven five. Yeah, is is seven iron number. I think you're shortchanging yourself. You're hitting it further lately. At least in here. Or I'm you're terrible. Like, or you're that. like me, or you're swinging harder no, inside. I'm, I'm terrible at that. I, I clubbing myself. I'm you way more likely to go over the back of a green than, yeah. than fall short. You need a caddy. Mm hmm. One of Rick's students, um, Rob Potter, uh, crash test Dobie. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. who follow Rob. Saw Rob for his, I think it was for his birthday or something like that done the, the kind of caddy experience and uh, so you can go to a golf course in England uh -huh. uh, and you can basically have a European tour caddy so I guess on their off weeks they, they do this sort of European this tour experience That's and you go uh, <laughs> you go and um, sort of you know have a professional caddy guide you around the golf course oh. he said it was unbelievable for strategy and you know yeah, club yeah. selection and can you imagine though that would be a phenomenal idea yeah Rob said it was brilliant that's a great idea really really cool uh, Rick signing off. Rick, thanks for uh, popping in. Have a good one, pal. Good to hear from you. Hopefully, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Paul, I can't. I can't reduce the ISO. It's a webcam. I can't. Right, probably the first one I've hit properly. Do you want to know how far that carried? If I'm watching it land right now. One ninety four. What? Seven iron. Ball speed one thirty one. Holy moly. 194. That's wild. So, um, ball speed for your seven iron is usually what? One, probably 125, six, six. Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think your launch and spin are that much different than, I know you turned that one over, so yeah, your spin bit. probably came down a bit. And obviously not, not playing my shaft. I've not given them a little flat, how I play them, et cetera, et cetera. But 
Yeah, because you, you, you'd have yours, what, two yeah, degrees two flat? Two flat. Yeah, this yeah. is the standard, so 62 and a half. Gotcha. Yeah, these are, these are super quick. So 30 and a half on the loft. I play mine at 32. Matty boy. So that's degree and a half stronger? Yeah. So here's the question is, what the hell is the titanium one like? If that's what the normal one yeah, is. Yeah, no, seriously. Okay, before you, don't hit those yet because your, uh, your <laughs> camera angle is frozen. Hold on. Uh, I'm not humming, that's the air conditioning. <laughs> because I can't live without it. There it is. There's the man. Okay. I know Ian's camera angle is a little, a little Sorry, fuzzy guys. with the webcam. I was trying to uh, improve the picture, but when I do that, it freezes, so that's not worth doing. Okay. All right. So you've got the TI edition. So initially, first impressions, um, it looks like R9. R9. Back in the day, okay. people might remember the, kind of the R9 iron. It was sort of enclosed, it had some foam in there. Um, it was a sort of hollow body construction. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks like an R9 iron. Gotcha. From back in the day. Uh, a couple people asking about the sound of that first P790. Higher pitch for sure. You think higher pitch? Yep. Okay. I, think, I think that's the, the thinning of the face. Uh, I think that always comes from a thinner face. Unless you, you really dampen the acoustics with some, you know, whether it be like a sort of a resin or some mm. kind of hot melt or something like that, you, when, you normally get that. When you say higher pitch, is that something you'd associate with like a cast club or like a yeah, clickier yeah, feel? Yeah, normally like a, like a got a club that has like a two piece construction where it's a very thin, hot face, fast and hard face yeah. with a, a you know, softer, you know, forged body or something okay. like that. So when you hit like a Strix and 585 and then a 785, the acoustic difference when you hit them both is significant. Is that right? That's because of the face plate. Interesting. All right. Maiden Voyage. Yeah, I like it. That's, it's gonna end up flying 200 yards on a seven iron here. <laughs> Sounded okay. It didn't sound Good. like so, it, it actually might have sounded better yeah. than the, the other one. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a lower sort of deeper sound, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. One ninety six in the air. Hmm. Um, that was hit well. That probably went further. No. One thirty six ball speed in that. Jeez. That's two. Uh, that must have been two exactly. Two hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild isn't it that's insane like I'm gonna go get my seven yeah, just, I, just, I was just gonna yeah. say I don't think like your spin rates hovering around low 5000s that's <clears> low <throat> but it's not that low your seven irons what 56 57 on 100 spin or a little more I think it's probably 50 yeah maybe 54 okay or somewhere in that region. Because I mean, you're you're a lower spin player. I'm with your a lower spin. I'm and I'm trying to spin it higher. Yeah. So um, if, if for you, I would say it's an interesting test because if for you these don't spin insanely lower, like if they're just a bit lower, that's a good sign. But look at look at these number. Look at that angle of descent, 50 degrees. It's crazy. Like if you go in the PJ Tour sort of numbers in, in the averages, they're like 51. Something like that. It's not like that's it's close. Even though there's not that much spin, like that's something super steep. 127, obviously, feet in, in peak height is it's a lot. Yeah. I'm also looking at, I know you are got those more upright than you play them. Yeah. So your dispersion is obviously left. But if you look at the where they're landing, yeah. they're landing in a tight circle. They are. Yeah, you're right. So two degrees flat, you'd probably be right on the, um, the center line. So that was really well hit. Mm. Like I hit that one. 179? About, 
what did I say my number was 175? So 178, look at the spin. Whoa. Look at the spin difference. Very similar land, lower in height, more spin, lower height. And what, seven miles an hour ball speed? Eight? Eight over the previous one. So how many degrees of loft are we dealing with? 32 versus 30, 30.5. Right? So a degree and a half. Yeah. Six miles an, or seven miles an hour ball speed should not be coming from only a degree and a half. So that's coming from head construction. Okay. So there's been times we've tested stuff that's longer, or sorry. Um, yep, you're, you're stronger absolutely Stronger lofted right. and we've said, okay, well, the loft basically accounts for yeah, that. Definitely. We've seen that. We have seen that. We've tested that and went, well, yeah, what we're seeing loft, is loft. But this is not enough, or sorry, there's too much of a, a window there to say it's only loft. That's Bit interesting loft. to me. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't it? Hmm. Well, we smoke a couple with the, the uh, UDI. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do you want a target? Have you just been wailing away sure. aimlessly? <laughs> do you know what? Can, can you go to settings, Matty, yep. on the top right? Uh, yeah, then turn that and uh, on screen data. Turn off that, that one, yeah. And then, yeah, so go to apply. And then you yeah, click off that one. Done? Yep. And then go there. So down the left side, so oh, you can this, read this it anyway. new window now is, is gotcha. really good. So uh, what, what do we expect to see? I'm going to give you a green at, what is it, a two iron? This is two iron. I'm going to put the green at 255. Okay. Because I know you can fly your, your hot metal four iron. I've seen you fly that, what, 230, 235. Yeah. Right? All right. Do you want a couple warm-ups? <laughs> Necked it. Necked at 2.30 in there. <laughs> that's wild. Not far off line either. That's, that's interesting. 2.45 total. <clears throat> Be happy with that T-ball. Um. Pulled it. A little turner. Yeah. Did you play the old one for a period of time? No, or never you, played We just it. had you test it, I think. Yeah, I think I just hit it with you in here. Driver numbers so far. Um, so guys, in case you missed some of the numbers we said, Ian's, um, Ian's seven iron was about seven or eight miles an hour slower, slower. on ball speed. Yeah with the difference of a degree and a half in loft. Yeah. Um, so that's by far the most we've ever seen between two irons that are close-ish in the loft configuration. Spin numbers were definitely lower, but descent angle was, uh, was actually steeper, so. How was that one? Good. I, I've hit the last two well. I just put, it's got a different sound. I pulled to that it. a little bit. It, it's definitely got a different noise to it. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. Almost, it's very sharp. Very kind of sharp sound it makes. Feel good. Yeah. That looked really good. Oh, I mean, one hundred and fifty ball speed out of a two iron Whoa. is is pretty decent. Like 247 carry there? Yeah, two, yeah, about that two, two four five. five out to two five nine. So it's that's a low that's a low launch, low spin club, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> let me let me quickly check the loft on it. Yeah, yeah. Let me just see what you, we're, you what launched we're dealing a, with. A bunch of those were around 12, 13 degrees of launch and sub three thousand spin. So it's kind of um kind of a stinger machine. It is a stinger machine and I think well let's let's be interesting to try and hit a couple How of How long do you think that shaft is? Tell you, that's high loft, Matty. That's that, 20, 20 and a half. Really? Yeah. You thought it'd be like 18? I thought it was 18. Can you imagine if it was? Let me, let me quickly check that. <laughs> Good morning, TXG. Uh, hold the phone for one second, literally. Let me mute that. 20 dead on. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, 
right. Yeah, a little, this, this would be, you know, people like to hit that stinger, you know, off the tee maybe have a little bit of nerves. Yeah, can you imagine, especially windy conditions or Th firm, this is firm fairway ball. golf course? That would go forever. People are saying this is the real mini driver. And kind of this. <laughs> Seriously. Honestly, it is. Half shank. <laughs> um, what, um, what's going on with the gapper? Are they keeping that? It, it has been a bit of a struggle, I think, for, for Taylor. There was, some, there, was, there was some people were saying there was maybe some, uh, some sort of sound issues, aerodynamic issues. There was a couple whistling of whistling sound? coming off. I the, thought there the was some odd stuff bit. when we tested it too. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I, we fit a few and it works really well for, for the purpose. I mean, that gap or low is, I mean, that thing is a rocket that launcher. That thing's crazy. Oh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, do you, I just do you think a bit of cosmetics held it back. Maybe that's what I think. Well, I should think do it, you? Well, yeah, I don't think it was quite the best looking club they ever made. That's, that's not good. It's a little bit kind of almost scuffy, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to go two missile launcher. It's going to go two sixty. That's crazy. Yeah, it, this thing's really hot. The last one was as well. To be fair. Mm -hmm. 12 degree launch. Yeah, it's Ooh. good. That's nice. It's a good. My fellow Scots are going to be yeah, that's, man, taking that, that to the links. That is a club for Scotland for sure. What, uh, what else have we got? So we can... Um, Dive into some some questions, whether yeah. it's about that or hmm. whatever else. Sean, our go after one, Ian. <laughs> Sean, swinging well. It's early. <laughs> it is early. It's a wee bit early. <laughs> I can't believe how much uh, golf ball came off when you were hitting this wedge. That was wild. I can't wait. So, guys, just a little sort of uh, a heads up, and I think it's actually probably um, less important in my mind now than it was before, but. I wanted to do a test of the, the, the new MG we MG2 wedge um, before the, the rust yeah. and after the rust. So we're, we're going to shaft up one of these and compare it. So we've got a 56 and a 60. We're going to move both to 58. Right. And then we're going to compare it like for like and, uh, and see sort of what's, what's so going on. Um, Corey is asking, did they hmm. launch the UDI at Portrush Unofficially. Unofficially, like there's always a tour launch and, and the, the tour players get to see it. So, yeah, there was, there was some tour guys, uh, Tiger, DJ. Um, there was, as I say, there was some non-contracted players, which unfortunately we can't speak about, but right. some really high-profile ones. Oh, really? Really high-profile. I, I didn't hear anything. Very about that. interesting. I have to do some googling later. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Bandit, this is today's live stream. So yes. You can, you can resume your usual uh, leisure and sleep yeah. schedule. Today's, um, what do we have going today? We've got a, a busy little day. We're definitely going to do some, some filming today, yeah? We've got lots of stuff. Um, I haven't even had a chance to ask you yet. Um, we've got the, uh, the TXG documentary, part one, coming Amazing. up. Amazing. What time do you want to put that out? Because I have it ready. You've seen it. I saw your little it. teaser last night. That was good. A little, little edit on your part. A little video oh, trim yeah. for a minute. <laughs> well, I saw you. Do. I'm like, I wonder what he's done. Like, because yeah. I watched when it started. I thought oh, it's quite good. Yeah, we're trying to kind of capture. Like, I, I love the bit where you, where you're sort of, you know, in the narration, you're like, welcome to the tour experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to keep basically whatever that was moving Backwards. back to one minute. Reverse uh, engineered. Yeah, I love it. So that was that was awesome. So I, like, I could not be more excited about this this series. Um, I, like even last night, I was thinking of like different parts that we can add in. Like, I, I can't wait to do one on, you know, the women of TXG. Mm. You know, I think it's very important for people to understand the role of Tracy and Rosanna play 100%. in here mm -hmm. uh, and how much they mean to the company and the business and the flow. And, you know, Rosanna's the first person that our customers meet. So, you know, more often than not, she will kind of start the process of somebody being comfortable even being so here. True. Like we have the, you know, we have the job to do our, you know, fitting and that is what it is. 
but you know they have such a you know important job and then you know Tracy's role is basically to make everything on the back end of the business so once the the, the fit's finished she's in charge of then making sure the product is ordered getting the, that you know order fulfilled in a good time and getting it out to you guys liaison with the build shop okay this customer has a special request they have a tournament or a trip or yeah. something we've got to send those clubs to Ohio by you know X period know. like these things TXG would not run if it wasn't for these people and you know, to story tell a little bit about the role that they play, like I'm really excited about doing that. I have an idea, it's funny that you mentioned that, that I want to do for one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. I want to go follow someone from the very beginning mm -hmm. before they ever come here, through their visit, yeah. through their fit, through their build, yeah. through it being finished and delivered to that them, would be and cool. then through to their, their final round, or their first round, mm -hmm. their final round, their first round with the club. That would be awesome. Yeah. And I think it'd find be cool. The right, the right person, um, little course that yeah. we can film before and after that would be amazing that would be amazing yeah. I'd love to do uh, I'd love to do a little recap with like a familiar faces series like where we have Sammy come in <laughs> that's a great you idea. know we have I just played with did my you? member guest was me and Sammy oh was it so I'd love to do that um, so people can can see I get that you know people asking me that question all the time like you know how did Sam get on did he actually improve his handicap I've seen that guy with his wedge really his wedges his, those ping, ping wedges. glide wedges I've, I've never seen like Sam is, he's a solid 15, 16 handicap. I have never seen someone at that level spin 58 degree wedges to a dead stop, pin high like five feet and make, I'm telling you, he did it like eight times. My jaw was on the ground. I'm like, what, who are you? That's, that's, that's <laughs> wicked. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's interesting, um, you know, when, when you get somebody who's a bit of a slicer, they can be some of the best wedge players going. So, so when you get someone with a very, very weak left hand, the first thing I see if I see someone with a weak left hand is I go, your short game and bunker game is dynamite because oh, you use the bounce properly. Um, you know, and you're you maintain not, the loft. That's right? it. So yeah. people with strong grips tend to pull the handle. They tend to dig the leading edge and then they tend to you know, lose all the attributes of the wedge. But people with a slightly weaker grip tend to use it much better. That's why you know, Jose Maria Olafabo was such an incredible wedge player because he had such a weak grip. Mm. Um, oh, so he was, he was yeah. you know, a, a very, very mm. um, sort of under sort of appreciated how good his short game was. Yeah, he was very solid. Um, okay, well, that was fun. I'm glad we did that. That's, that's a TXG first. Live I love a TXG least. first. Um, I hope you guys like the format of that. I know it's, I mean, being a brand agnostic place, this is a really brand focused mm -hmm. video, but um, good of TaylorMade and we have some other companies that are gonna do this for us to let us have stuff right away yeah. when it's product release time. So. Um, obviously, we're going to make full videos with all of them, but this I think this was fun just to kind yeah, of do a little live definitely. look and hit some hit some shots, take some questions. Mm -hmm. um, not our usual Q and A format, but yeah. it was a good time. Yeah, I think I mean obviously we're trying to uh, trying to kind of keep it where we're we're giving you guys some info on the new stuff, uh, somewhat informational. But like I said, there's there's not enough. Uh, there's not enough time almost for us to really dive into yeah. you know, the, the full shoot match. Once we do each individual kind of product and, and its full breakdown, we'll take the deep dive then. A lot of it is, I think, I mean, it's like anything else. It's fun to see br the brand new stuff when you're, yeah. this is the first time most people have seen it. Get some initial impressions. Yep. I mean, you'll have seen Instagram photos this morning, but it's different to see it in hand and, yeah. and having some shots. Um, uh, lefty SoCal golfer, new title stuff anytime soon. Yes, uh, we're, we're kind of going back and forward with, uh, mm. with Ryan at Titleist right now about when we can go up there and, and sort of, you know, see the whole line and So and go their, it. their official um, Canadian fitting facility is yeah. about 40 minutes from here yep. at Eagle's Nest. Mm. Amazing place. Great facility. Phenomenal facility. Yeah. Um, so that'll be coming soon. Um, the other new sort of product release we'll get to test, Mizuno stuff. Mm -hmm. um, August, end of August, the end of this month. Yeah. People yep. know that Chris is coming, right? We they know this. Chris is coming, yeah. So Chris, Chris well, Vichal is coming back we'll, to see us again. Yeah, we'll film it, I believe, on the 26th, isn't yeah, it? And, and then, we can, uh, it and then we can release it, oh, that's it, a week later. And we've got some, um, we've got some cool stuff, obviously, coming, uh, an announcement off the back of that one. So. Yes. All right, so lots of good stuff going on. Yeah. We'll get filming. Um, what time do you want to release the... Um, what do we say, midday? Fired up for noon. like noon? Yeah, that gives us 5 p.m. For, for our UK okay. crew. All right, so about two hours from now, I'll put, mm -hmm. uh, I'll put the link up now um, once we get off, and you'll see the uh, episode one. Love episode it. So one of the tour experience. Very cool. Okay, right. busy day. Thanks for bearing with us last week, Same. guys. We had, uh, we had a nice little refresh, and. 
Um, so but we've, we've been you know working on on some other projects. So uh, hopefully it'll all, all play itself it out. We're back to our normal pace this week, yeah. though. Good stuff. All right, excellent.